It's the end of the weekend, but I still wanna turn up. Yeah, I still wanna turn up. All I want is to go again, but you ain't. How you doing? Hi. So, I wanted to do an intro for my week two, but I mean, I have nothing to do an intro for. Like, what am I gonna say? This is week two of my Hep C treatment. Here you go. I have nothing else to say. <laughs> I mean, how's everyone doing? Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Ashley, and this entire platform, if that's what you want to call it with my 40 subscribers, that I appreciate every single one of you for. I have gotten like 20 something subscribers in the last week, um, and I appreciate, hold on, my nose itches, y'all. Hold on, okay. I appreciate every single one of you because my content, it's not for everybody. So I know if you're subscribed to me, it's because you truly either want to learn or it resonates in you somehow. And I appreciate that because it's not fun. Like I'm not over here doing fun shit. I'm not over here eating. I'm not anything pretty to look at. I'm talking about hard stuff and I'm bringing truths to light that need to be talked about. And I thank you for supporting me in any way that you can because it's hard. It's hard to hear the stuff I have to talk about. And I wanted to say if my videos are ever too much for you to handle mentally, don't watch it. Your mental health is not worth a view for me. You can support me in other ways other than watching my video. You can watch it and mute it and look away just so I do get the view count if that's what you really want to do for me. You can subscribe, you can follow, you can share my video. That is supporting me, okay? That's all you have to do. I don't want you watching my videos if it's going to trigger you because it's not worth it to me. I make these videos for people who are ready to acknowledge their addiction or their loved one's addiction or for people who want to learn and just hear my experiences in life and maybe it can help them go through their own trauma in their own life that's why i make my videos it's not to force someone to trigger someone so please if you're not ready to hear my story of hep c and addiction please don't listen yet don't listen yet i will be here forever i'm never taking these down watch it while you want to subscribe follow and share that's enough for me boo and I, I appreciate it so week two you guys this was a rough one you're gonna see in the few video clips and then in my overview at the end this was a rough one and uh I just hope it gets better I hope it gets better because uh whoo you guys it's rough I feel okay right now and I hope I feel okay for the rest of today but just watch it just watch it y'all y'all will see so i'll catch y'all at the end to go over my overview for the week if you're not going to stick around till the very end for my overview make wise choices and recover safely however that means for you and i'll see y'all later bye you guys hey you guys so this is day eight of my hepatitis c medicine i officially just finished my first well i finished my first week yesterday um, I just filmed the last segment for that to wrap that up and today is the eighth day. I just started my new box uh, This is what it looks like. So each box has seven. I just took one out So that should be in there But each box has seven doses and I just pull one out each dose has three pills in it And then I take those three pills all at once one time a day I take mine between 4 30 and 5 30 every day and I take it with my dinner I do that because it usually makes people tired. So if someone takes it at night, they usually can sleep easier however the main side effects i have been having personally are insomnia and extreme fatigue so i'm hoping i can get that figured out and sorted out 
I do not want to take any type of sleeping medicine, even melatonin, because the treatment is only eight weeks. I'm not like, this isn't long-term treatment. I'm not taking a medicine that's gonna change my entire life. It's something that's only gonna be for eight weeks and then I'm done with it. So it's not like a lifestyle change. So I'm not wanting to take any sleep medications. I don't want to do that. I just wanna deal with this for the eight weeks and move on afterwards and not have to taper off of a sleep medicine. I don't wanna do that. You know, I'm in recovery and my recovery specifically I cannot and I do not want to take any medication other than my methadone because I have an addictive personality and I will become, I become addicted literally to Tylenol. If it's in pill form or if it's a medication, I have a tendency of becoming addicted to it and becoming dependent on it because that's how I am. I will expect to take a medicine every day to help me sleep if I start taking it and I will have to take that every single day to sleep and it'll eventually send me, I know myself, and it will send me into a bad area and it will just open the door to me taking harder drugs and I don't want to do that so that's why me personally my recovery I take my methadone and I do not take any other medication if I need to take an Advil throughout the day or throughout the week I may take you know one or two doses a week maybe if I really need to but my recovery is as clean as I can possibly get for me because I am tempted very easily and I give in easily. I'm not strong enough to take a sleep medication a few times and walk away from that and I know I'm not. I have acknowledged that and I have accepted that and that's why I'm not going to take even melatonin because I will end up taking the whole bottle because that's what I do. That's why I'm just going to deal with the insomnia and hopefully, you know, within a month or two after this ends in now seven weeks, hopefully I go back to being good and sleeping four to six hours a week because usually I'll sleep between or four to six hours a week. Usually I sleep between four to six hours a night and that's normal for me. That's what I do. I sleep anywhere between four to six hours and I'm good with that and I can function on four hours or I can function on six hours. I'm good with that. So as long as I can go back to my four hours. I'm good so I think I'll get back there after I get off this treatment and my body goes back to being how it was and I'm gonna head to the gym here soon start working out I'm excited for that um, which I'm definitely gonna be filming and bringing y'all with me so I'll check back in tomorrow thank you for watching remember make wise choices and recover safely however that looks for you I'll see y'all tomorrow bye y'all Hey you guys, today is day 11 of my hepatitis C treatment. I did not film day 9 or day 10, mainly because I forgot. Um, just to recap, nothing has changed greatly. I am still very tired and my migraines are getting worse. So I am s very sleepy and I'm very exhausted. Like I feel exhausted. Like I feel like I just ran like a 15k marathon like my muscles hurt like whenever i'm showering to even wash my hair is so exhausting i can't stay on long now because all of my nieces and nephews are over you may hear them it's kind of loud but i just want to check in and say everything is going good as of now and i will check back in tomorrow and that's it so i hope everyone's having a good day bye you guys okay today is day 13 um I am just not. It's been really bad since yesterday on day 12. I don't even know when I actually filmed the last like, check-in, but since the last time I checked in, which was a few days ago, I it has gotten so bad. My muscles are so tired and so sore. I am so tired from the hep C medicine. Like I haven't gotten sick, like in the sense of like um, nausea, vomiting and stuff, but I am so exhausted and like my muscles hurt and i don't know if this is from the medicine i need to do um a check uh, i need to research it but i am starting to sweat i i'm wrapped up but i'm starting to sweat like i get so hot and i start i'm drenched i have to change my clothes like four times a day the last like today would be the third day in a row that i've been like that i am just i'm not okay <laughs> like I'm just so uncomfortable in my own skin and I'm really foggy headed and I woke up today and my eye is like red and it hurts and there's like gunk in it. I don't think that's related to the medicine. I think I just have some type of an infection trying to happen in my eye, but I am just sweaty. I am tired. My muscles hurt. And I'm just not okay. I'm glad I'm not sick, but I'm just not okay. I just feel weird. Like it feels like my body is fighting. Like that's the, literally what it feels like and that's exactly what it's doing 
with this medicine. It is fighting off this hep C and I feel it happening. I mean, my body literally, the last time I checked in, I was okay. And over, literally overnight, I woke up the next day, like two, two days ago. And I just, it was like, I got ran over by a truck, gradually getting worse. Just the tiredness and the aches are getting worse. I'm glad I'm not sick. I hope it does not get to that point. I have been a little bit nauseous, um, going in and out of being nauseous, um, but I'm not sick, sick. So I'm really hoping, I am really praying I don't get any more sick. I can deal with the tired and the aches. Um, and I'd even rather sweat over being sick like nausea vomiting and diarrhea and stomach cramps and stuff um, my surgery is on june 22nd they cleared me my hepatitis c doctor cleared me for the surgery um however they did say the pain medicine after just a few of the pills the last like two or three days she did say that can prohibit the hep c medicine from absorbing in my blood correctly so she did say to not take a lot of pills if i can help it and to space them out when i take them supposedly this hep c medicine is not supposed to affect my methadone at all how that gets absorbed because methadone is absorbed through the liver so i'm hoping it doesn't stop me from absorbing my daily dose so pretty much i'm on 110 milligrams a day and i'm hoping that this medicine because it's going through my liver and it's de you know it's healing the infection in my liver hepatitis i'm hoping it doesn't stop the methadone from doing from being absorbed correctly into my body honestly that's what that's what it feels like like it feels like minor withdrawals it feels like I'm, my dose is not holding me and that's that's how i can compare it to you like i'm not sick like the nausea but it feels like the sweats you get from if your dose isn't holding you it feels like the muscle aches and the tiredness you get if your dose isn't holding you but it's not withdrawals like I, I don't feel like death from withdrawals but that's the only thing i can compare it to is if you know you're on methadone or suboxone and your dose doesn't hold you for 24 hours but you're not necessarily dope sick it's just not holding you so that's that's how i how i'm feeling and i'm just i just I just want this to be over with and I have been getting really bad migraines. Um, they tend to happen at night and I've noticed at night is when it gets really bad and or during the daytime and I think it's just when my methadone is wearing off and my methadone is wearing off earlier. Like it used to last me all day until the next morning and I could even go the next morning a little over my 24. Like I could go up to 28 hours, 29 hours of not dosing and be completely fine now it's like i have to get up and dose every morning at between 6 and 7 a.m i have to and then i'll end up falling right back asleep because i'm so exhausted i can't move and whenever i go to get up in the morning after sleeping for a few hours or even during the day if i'm if i end up taking a nap um, and i go to get up like my muscles i can't just get up i have to stretch out my muscles i have to stretch out my legs i have to crack my knees i have to stretch out my arms because they're so sore and they are so tired i can't just move my arm like it's something i have to think about because i'm so exhausted i'm about to be going into week three two days i start week three so i've only got like five six seven eight i've only got just about five more weeks just about five more weeks of this and that's why i keep telling myself because i can see me i'm sorry i i am wrapped up in a sheet i say all, everything i just said sorry about i'm holding my camera because my tripod is still broken but i have I'm, I'm naked because i was so hot and so sweaty i had to run into my room just now it's like six o'clock at night my dad went out to get dinner for all the kids because i have um, all my nieces and nephews over i have like five nieces and nephews over for the week and my dad went to go get some dinner and all the kids went with him basically and i was so hot because i gave my youngest son a bath he's only three and i was so hot during it i had to come in my room and strip down my clothes because i was so hot and sweating so much and it was just so bad so i had to take off all my clothes but i thought i would go ahead while i got a moment of silence and moment of clarity i would go ahead and film this but um as i was saying I can see myself getting very depressed from this entire situation. I can, so I can see myself getting extremely depressed over this. I, I can see me falling into a depression because how hard it is for me to move. I don't want to move and I just want to sleep. And for me, what gets me into a depression is not being in a routine. 
So disrupting my routine, sleeping all day, staying in bed all day, not having a reason to get up, get dressed, brush my teeth, do my hair, do my makeup, get going. Even if I don't leave the house, I just do my homework online, do some videos. That would get me in a depression and that would cause my anxiety to go up really, really high. So I'm trying very, very hard to keep a stable mindset because I don't want to go into a deep depression because I don't suffer from depression. I never have. I suffer from anxiety and every other mental illness. I have, I'll link it above, I have a podcast about my mental illnesses. I've never suffered from depression. However, because I am bipolar and I believe I am borderline personality disorder, need to get back to the doctor because I was in the middle of a diagnosis with that a few years ago and I stopped going. But anyway, diagnosed bipolar type 1. When I do get depressed, it is severe. Not discrediting anyone else's depression. Um, I'm saying me personally, I don't suffer from depression, so I'm not, I don't get depressed on a daily, weekly, or even monthly basis. I don't get depressed like that. So when I do get depressed, I usually don't notice it because it doesn't happen. Like, I get sad, yeah, and I get hopeless, and I get, you know, but that's just, that comes and goes. It's not depression. So I don't notice when I'm getting depressed until it's too late and I'm already in that mindset and there's no pulling me out. So I'm trying really, really hard to not get in that mindset because of me being so tired to move. I don't wanna get in that mindset. So what I'm doing is writing down every day, maybe once or twice a day, just writing down emotions and writing down the words because I'm trying to stay very aware of my emotions and i'm trying to stay very aware of my mental state right now because i could so so easily fall down and not even realize it and i, I don't want to get to that place i want to see it happening i want to be aware of how i'm feeling so if i am falling down even more i can reach out for the help i need let the people who need to know hey there's something going on with me. So that's where I'm at right now. I am just so tired. And I know I keep saying I'm tired. Like I was watching my last video uh, for my week one overview. And I, I know I keep saying I'm tired. I don't know how else to explain it. Like I don't know how else to explain it. I am tired. That That's it. I am so tired. I hate God. Like I said, the only way I can explain it is it feels like I've been fighting because I'm fighting against this hep C and it feels like it. I can feel my body fighting against this virus, trying to win, trying to rid my body of it. My liver is trying to heal. And because of it, it's taking effect on every other part of my body. I can feel it happening and it is so... Ugh. I know that people in my life have seen a difference. Like my mom and my sister, they just say, they, I look tired. Like I just look out of it. I look exhausted. I look sad. They said like, I just look like there's no life in my face because it's just, there's nothing there right now, you know? And like I said, I only have about five and a half weeks left as of now today when I'm filming this and I'm, I'm just trying to get through it because the entire process ain't nothing but eight weeks. And then within four to six weeks after that, I should be feeling back to good. And then when I get the final results of if I'm cured or not, I can officially move on with my life. And I cannot wait to get to that point. So I will check back in later with you guys. This was a long update because I haven't updated in a few days and a lot has changed. I'm hoping I don't get worse. I'm hoping my body adjusts and I can move on and go back to being okay. <laughs> so if any one of you are going through this, just know you're not alone, okay? Know this treatment. Like, I can't even keep my eyes open. This is what I mean. This is a perfect example. I know I probably look like I'm fucked up, and I, I, I promise you I'm not. I am so tired. I cannot keep my eyes open. Like, my muscles, like, they're tired, okay? My eyelids are tired. My arms are tired, and it hurts. So I'm going to go try to lay down. Thank God I have my mom helping me because if I didn't have help right now with my own two kids, I don't know what I would do because I cannot do this right now. So I'm going to go try and relax, try and rest up because I have a lot of homework that I have to get done tomorrow and the next day. So like I said, if you're going through this, no, you are not alone. I'm right there with you. If you're about to go through it, no, you're not alone, okay? And if you're just suffering, living trying to get through life with addiction no you are not alone and what i am living right now is a direct repercussion and a direct consequence to my actions of sharing needles and being around people who are not safe to be around this is 
a consequence of my own reckless actions when I was in addiction, in my active addiction, and afterwards. I was around people I should not have been around, and I shared stuff with people I should not have. I'm letting you know. That's why I'm doing this, okay? I, I'm doing this not for pity or sympathy. I'm doing this entire, you know, documenting my treatment so people see the real effects of addiction, and not only addiction, the real effects of IV drug use. There are real consequences. It's not just you shoot up once and you walk away from it. When you share a needle with someone, you are taking everything from their body and putting it into yours. Everything. Think about that, how nasty that is. Every person they've ever been with, every food they've ever eaten, the drinks they're drinking, everything in their blood, okay? Everything in their GI tract, everything in their lungs, and their respiratory system, everything in the, from their nervous system, and their blood flowing around. You are now injecting it into your body. Take that in. And included in that are viruses, hep C, syphilis, HIV, herpes, every other virus you can think of, all the other STDs. Just think about it, okay? Not to mention MRSA and other staph infections. Not to mention that. And then not to mention the, you know, COVID that's been going around too. It's bad, you guys, okay? Think about what you're doing. And I know whenever you're in IV drug use, I made a whole video about it. I know whenever you're in the middle of IV drug use, you don't think about it. If you're already there, you're already there. There ain't no talking you out of it until you're ready to be out of it, okay? But I am also talking to the people who are either A, never done drugs and they're thinking about it, or B, they do drugs but they don't shoot yet and they're thinking about it. I am showing you the consequences to my actions of choosing to do IV drug use, direct consequence, and it is affecting my life in every way possible because I chose to use a needle. Not only did I choose to use a needle, I chose to share needles and I chose to be reckless. I'm hoping to deter people from doing what I did. You know, if you wanna use a needle, make sure it's a new needle. I'm not telling you to, but if you're already using a needle, how about from this point on, don't share needles. And if you are using a needle, make sure it's your own needle. And if you've never used a needle, hopefully you don't. Like this is a direct, and if you could feel how I feel right now, I mean, I wish you could. Like I'm sitting naked in my room while my family's out there because I can't, I'm too hot. Like I was sweating in too much pain to be out there. And I can't even have my eyes open because they hurt to have my eyelids open. Like I look like I'm fucked up and really I am just in pain and I'm exhausted from hepatitis C treatment. Y'all be safe please and make wise choices. I will talk to y'all later. Stay safe you guys. Bye. Hey you guys. Oh, this is the overview for week two of my hepatitis C treatment. I am currently in week three. The day I'm filming this right now, this overview, I am starting day 16 today. It's either day 16 or day 17. So I'm well into my treatment now. My body's getting used to it. I am now in week three as I'm filming this. And as you have seen throughout this video, um, it hit me hard this week. Follow me on TikTok. It's The Addict Mom if you don't because i do daily updates like quick updates over there on my tiktok and i kind of go you know daily in depth of how i'm feeling if you don't want to wait for this video every week then you can go over there daily and just see you know what's up with me and see the progression like i said this week it really hit me hard the side effects it's like i'm getting more and more tired by the day every day i'm getting more and more tired and it's not just like I'm tired. It's like I am exhausted. My muscles have started to hurt. My muscles are tired. Like I was taking a shower, washing my hair. I wash my hair maybe two or three times a week. It just depends. Some weeks I only wash it once. Some weeks I don't wash it at all. It just depends on the week and what I'm doing. I haven't added any type of heat to my hair in probably a month. So um, I'm not washing it as much. I went to go wash my hair two or three times this week. I, it hurt to lift my arms, like to wash my hair. It hurt. I was so exhausted after taking my showers, even the showers when I didn't wash my hair, because I take a shower every single day, sometimes twice a day. So I know I take a shower at night before bed because I cannot get into my bed without taking a shower. Even if I didn't leave the house, I just can't do that. I cannot go to sleep with the day still on my body. I take a shower and renew my body. I have to cleanse my body, cleanse my soul, cleanse my spirit. And that's what I do in my showers. I cleanse my entire soul, spirit, mind, body, heart, soul, everything. That's what my showers do for me. So. 
sometimes I will take them in the morning or daytime, especially in the summer, Florida heat, summer, humidity, wetness, ew, sweatiness. I'm a big girl with big booty, big tatas, and I sweat, okay? So I take showers and it hurt. Like I got out the shower this entire week, every time I took a shower every single day and I was so tired and I was in pain just from my muscles. And I definitely started getting nauseous around day 13, 14. I started getting nauseous, definitely started getting nauseous. Started getting stomach cramps, started getting, my migraines are getting worse. Every day I have them. I'm not vomiting yet. It's just nausea, like I'm just nauseous. No diarrhea. Another huge effect I have been having on my body this week that has like every it's getting worse by the hour is sweating. I am sweating. I don't know. And methadone, y'all know I'm on methadone. I'm on 110 milligrams a day. And methadone already makes people sweat and it already gives hot flashes. So I'm already a sweater as it is. This Hep C medicine, it, I literally get so hot and I get so sweaty. I have to walk in my room. I have to walk in my bedroom. I've shut the door, lock it, and I literally strip naked. There we go. Okay. I had to charge my, my camera because this charge does not last. Anyway, so what was I getting at? Okay. So methadone already makes you sweat like crazy, okay? But this Hep C medicine has made me so sweaty and so hot. I am literally dripping sweat from every crevice, every part of my body on my chest on my back on my leg on my butt on my neck on my hands i'm sweating on my fingers like it's crazy i have to come in my room like three four five times a day come in here shut my door lock it and i have to strip naked literally strip naked i have two towels hanging in here i have wet wipes and i have to wipe my body and i have to dry off with a towel because i'm sweating so so profusely it's crazy how much I am sweating. I hate, and I, if y'all know me, one thing about me, I hate heat. I hate the heat. I hate being hot. I am no fun. I am a raging see you next Tuesday when I get hot. Like, don't mess with me when I'm hot. And it's funny that I live in freaking Florida. My entire life born or raised. I hate the heat. I'm no fun in the summer, okay? And I hate sweating because I sweat even uh, when I'm not on methadone, on methadone, on medicine, no medicine, clean, sober, in recovery, active addiction. I sweat. I've always sweated. I am just a, my whole family. We sweat. Um, we have thyroid issues up in this house. We have I have minimal hyperthyroidism. My daughter had it. She's slowly outgrowing it with her diet um, as she's getting older. And it's just in my family we sweat okay on top of it i have anxiety on top of it, i have bipolar so my mind and mental and emotional status will make me sweat even more i am a sweater okay and this medicine is just amping up the sweat and somebody made a comment on my last video i think it was either on tiktok or on my last video on youtube i forget they said they knew someone who took the hep c medicine it was either her brother or her friend and he was profusely sweating but it went away once the medicine ended maybe a week or two after the medicine ended after it got out of his system he stopped sweating and he went back to his normal you know how he would sweat or get hot or whatever so i have a feeling the sweating and it isn't listed side effect but it's not a common side effect like in their test studies you know but apparently i have been told by two different people two different comments that they've known people to take the hep c medicine not even my specific i'm on maverick m-a-v-y-r-e-t people who also took other types of medicine for hep c and they sweat too so i think it's just the medicine i mentioned this in another video throughout the week my liquid methadone is metabolized through the liver. This medicine is working on my liver and I already have a jacked up liver because of my hep C. I've had it for many years before I started treatment and it's already starting the beginning stages of cirrhosis and um, liver damage. Like there's already scarring on there. I honestly believe I'm not getting my full therapeutic dose of methadone because of this treatment. I think it's affecting how, my me how it's metabolized. So either my methadone is metabolizing too quickly and I'm going through it like my body is metabolizing it too quickly and I'm going through it quicker like the feeling of it is not holding me for 24 hours because I'm metabolizing it too quickly or I'm just not metabolizing all of it because of this medicine and my liver is just you know it's do it's doing the most right now you know and my body is fighting against itself to heal my liver to heal me from this hep C this virus 
that's invading me. So I think honestly, I'm either not getting the full dose because of this, or I'm just metabolizing it too quickly. And it's causing me to go into minor withdrawal early, early in the day by like between three and 5 p.m. And it's not like I said enough withdrawal to where I want to increase my dose. I don't want to increase my dose right now. I'm not at that point because I only have like five and a half weeks left. You know, I only have five and a half weeks left of this medicine. I don't want to increase another, you know, potentially 20, 30 milligrams and I'm just going to get off in a few weeks. I don't want to do that because I'm planning um, a few weeks after I get done with the hep C medicine, maybe two or three months after, once I stabilize again and I'm considered cured, I'm going to start tapering off my methadone. And I don't want to go higher because it's going to take me longer to taper off. If it gets to the point I need to go up, then I will, but I'm not at that point yet. It's just a very, very huge discomfort but I'm not puking I'm not diarrhea to me what would cause me to go up is if I'm puking and having diarrhea everything else I can handle those two puking and diarrhea because when I throw up and get diarrhea from withdrawals I'm done it, it's so bad when I puke and have diarrhea I'm sent to the hospital I always get dehydrated it is bad I am always on death's door when my withdrawals get to the point of vomiting and diarrhea because my body cannot handle it it just can't handle it so if I get to that point I will definitely increase you know maybe five or ten milligrams slowly and see if that helps me but I'm not at that point yet so I'm trying to handle this, you know, like an adult, I'm trying to be strong and get through this and I am, but this week it really, oh, today I feel, yesterday I felt okay. Yesterday was day 15, today is day 16. I feel okay today as well. I was able to, I just put my hair up in a bun, but I was able to, first thing I do when I wake up is brush my teeth and wash my face, but I was able to put on a little bit of makeup. I just did like mascara, I did my brows and just like a little bit of bronzer and blush, nothing crazy. So I did a very, very simple minimal base just so i could film this and i'm gonna finish up this video that i'm filming right now the editing so this can go out tomorrow or tuesday and i have a bunch of homework i need to get done today that's due tomorrow and then a bunch of homework that's due either wednesday or thursday so I have a lot of stuff that I have to get done in the next few days. It's not hard, it's just I have a lot to do because I've been so sick, I haven't even been able to do my, I haven't been able to film, I haven't been able to edit, I haven't been able to do my homework, I just haven't been able to do anything because I've been either too tired or too sick. But like I said, yesterday I felt okay and today I feel okay. Um, it comes in waves today. Like I'll feel really tired and weak and sick and I'll feel okay like right now I'm feeling okay. So that's it for this overview of week two. It got really bad. I'm hoping my body is adjusting and I can start feeling a little bit better and a little bit more at ease and a little bit more normal over the next week going into week three I really really hope my body stabilizes with this medicine because I have surgery on the 22nd which I will be documenting and talking about and filming is to get my fallopian tubes removed I was supposed to get it May 22nd but the morning I went in I had an anxiety attack and we rescheduled it because I was a mess there was no way that was gonna happen that day so this week I'm doing the prep for it I have the post the pre-op and I have to get my anxiety anxiety medicine and my pain medicine for it. I have to do all the paperwork for it. So that's coming up. And the week after that, I have to be on bed rest. So I don't know. I'm just, I'm doing okay today though, like I said. So I will keep y'all updated. As always, I will keep y'all updated. I have a lot of stuff filmed. I have a lot of stuff filmed. I just need to edit it and I can't. Sitting at a computer right now is very hard to do. With my muscles hurting, I, I get like the muscle zaps and tingles and it's just, I'm not okay right now. I'm not okay. I know yesterday and the day before was really tough for me emotionally and mentally. I've been, I've been really struggling mo emotionally and mentally. I got through it. I'm feeling okay now. I'm, no, I'm not craving anything in this moment as we speak. Um, I don't want to get high in this moment as we as we speak as I'm filming right now but emotionally and mentally for some reason I am not doing okay I've been thinking a lot about my past I have been thinking a lot about the the wrong things I've done and I feel very guilty for a lot of things that I've done in my life and I don't know where it's coming from um, I take it as this is just another step in my recovery me coming to terms with some of the wrongs that I've done and me having to process the guilt that I feel for wronging people like 
friends that I've lost along the way. I've been missing a few friends that I know I'll never see again because they just want nothing to do with me. Even though I'm in recovery and I've been clean and sober, they want nothing to do with me and I couldn't call them if I wanted to. I'm blocked on all social media and that sucks that people to this day still have me blocked and I can't apologize to the person I want to apologize to. I don't even know if she'll ever watch these videos. I was thinking the other day, what if she watches these videos? Like, I wonder if she's heard that I make these videos. I wonder if she knows. I wonder if she's watching them. And if she is watching them, she knows exactly who she is right now. It's hard because I've been thinking the past like few days just there are so many people I miss from my past that, that were actual friends of my true friends who left me when I got into heroin because they couldn't be around me anymore I was bringing so much drama to their life and I was just very volatile to be around I was very volatile I was very angry and a mean person and I was very unstable and I would call friends up and I'll just yell at them over the phone and I'll freak out and cause fights and because I was fucked up like I'll be high and then I wouldn't remember it a day or two later and I would be like what are you talking about and I didn't apologize because I don't remember doing it I didn't realize I had anything to, to apologize for and now I'm realizing I do and I wish I could apologize and I can't so I want to take this moment to apologize to the people I have wronged I'm sorry I now see in my addiction what I did and I see that I was wrong and I'm sorry that I brought it to you in your life and I'm sorry I brought it to your family and I brought it around your kids. I'm, s I'm sorry because if somebody came around me and my kids and they were high on heroin and Xanax, I would kick them out of my life too. I have done it. I, I have done it since I've been clean. Multiple people I've kicked out of my life because they will not get sober or simply just because they're high. I can't have you around my life and I get it and I want you to know if you're one of those people who have had to leave me in my life because of my choices. I want you to know I, I don't. I don't blame you and I don't I'm not mad at you for that. I understand. It took me years to get here. It took me years to get here to finally understand why you did what you did. And I'm sorry because you did not deserve that. Neither did your family. Neither did your kids. And you know who you are. I'm not going to say your name because I'm not, I'm not going to do that to you. But you know who you And I'm sorry. And I wish I could apologize in person. I understand why I'm blocked. I understand why you never want to talk to me again. I get it. I have done some wrong, evil, bad things in my life during my active addiction, and I am sorry. I'm sorry. This has been plaguing me for the last few few weeks, but really the last week. I don't know if it's just because I'm in a weak state of mind because of this medicine. I'm already feeling sick, already feeling depressed, already feeling anxious. That maybe it's just hitting me all at once, but it's really stuck in my mind how prevalent my addiction is to everyone else and how my addiction was such an inconvenience to so many different people in my life. And at the time of my active addiction, I did not care. And that's what addiction does. It makes someone not care. It, it doesn't make someone not care, I take that back. It prevents somebody from seeing how they're acting while they're high. It prevents somebody from seeing their true self in that moment. They know what they're doing is wrong. Like they know they're getting high and they know that's wrong. But sometimes we are so out of our mind. We don't remember or see or know the shit that we did. And that is no excuse to do the shit we did because we should never even get to that point. But. The fact of the matter is I did get to that point. I got to the point to where I blacked out many times and I would bring that drama and that despair upon other people in my life. And I took my friends for granted who said that they were there for me and I took their children for granted and I took their families for granted and now I'm alone because of it and I'm sorry. And now I've got to work on apologizing to myself and I've got to work on forgiving myself for bringing myself to this point to having nobody. That is another step. That's a whole nother video because I'm not there yet. I'm not that good yet. I'm not, th I'm not that good yet. I do not forgive myself for doing that to myself yet, but I know I will because I've forgiven myself for so much already. So I know I'm going to get there in my own time. So I'm going to wrap this video up, you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time to hear me out. 
do not forget to subscribe don't forget to follow me don't forget to share and let me know any of your experiences with addiction or hepatitis c treatments if it's you somebody you know or if you work in the medical profession and you've seen a lot of patients with it let me know in the comments down below or you can email me go to my website theaddictmom.online and all my ways to email me or DM me are on my contact page because I would love any advice I can get, any type of testimonials I can get just so I know what to expect because this is very terrifying. Taking medicine that you have no idea how it's going to affect you, it's terrifying. So anyway, this video is long enough. Okay, as always, make wise choices and recover safely, however that means for you. As long as you're functional and away from your drug of choice and getting better, you're doing good, okay? I'll see y'all later. There was a time when you had me fall into the ground Like a king without a crown Take the road.